it's uh, good to be here and be the, the first one back when everything's live and everything like that. I was just saying that uh, the past two months have been great for me because I'm finally like getting back on my rhythm and all that stuff. So it's, uh, it's exciting. So Pedal Power uh, is a company that I've had for about three years. Um, we do advertising, transportation, and then some uh, bike education stuff. Coming in the front door there, there's that little placard that says Bikes Makes Community, Bike Wheels up there. I know Merge is really great with, you know, indoor bike parking and all that stuff. And I do think bikes are uh, very pragmatic for communities and provide a lot of benefits to communities in different ways. And that's kind of the foundation that this business is built upon. Uh, so a little about me, bicycling's in my blood. That's actually my great, great grandfather uh, in Montana in like the late 1800s, early 1900s. And he probably put 50,000 miles on that bike. In fact, I, doing ancestry research, that bike is in the uh, Montana State Historical Society Museum, so I'd like to go see that at some point. I'd like to actually own it and put it up in the wall in the house or something. But, you know, kind of how bicycles are part of our community, everybody's got a bike in the garage. Um, they're prevalent, they're everywhere, especially here in Iowa when we have Rag Rye, we have such, you know, great things with Bike Iowa City. Um, Cedar Rapids has great bike trails. So bikes are one of those things that we're all called to, but you know, uh, we don't always realize the full value and potential that they have and impact they have on the society. So my wife and I were in Las Vegas, I don't know, 2016, 15, something like that. And I saw a billboard truck go by. And because I bike a lot, I just kind of like the challenge. I'm like, I bet you I could pull a billboard on a bike. And so over that winter, I kind of uh, adapted and, and built a trailer, kind of worked on that idea. And I'm like, yeah, let's, let's try advertising by a billboard uh, by pulling it on a bike. So the picture on the right is the first iteration I had of the bike trailer I built myself. It was terrible. Um, it was a great idea, and I worked out all the kinks and stuff like that um, and, and really built it up. But it was a little too big. Uh, the setup for it was terrible. Um, I went under the railroad bridge by the university library and I forgot that I was pulling a trailer that first time I was down here and it was too tall for the railroad bridge. And I found that out in an interesting way. Um, so since then, I've really um, adapted the trailer model. So the first trailer I bought was from Romania where they actually designed bike trailers uh, to pull these banners um, by bicycle. So they are bike specific. Um, it works like a dream, and since then I've adapted things like the hitch and how the quick setup and all these other things. But this is pretty much what uh, the bike trailers look like now that I have. Um, it's eco-friendly. Um, they're really adaptable, so I can um, target you know different audiences. I can go where cars cannot. Um, they're really eye-catching. People have seen us out at like Kinnick game days from a couple hundred yards away. Um, one of my uh, uh, employees was writing them last night and, and they're all pretty new and she said boy it is so fun every time I take the banner out to see people smiling taking pictures having those conversations um, and even though I kind of covered that in the training she said I didn't realize how many people really see it and how eye-catching it truly is uh, low overhead um, they're really accessible so we can go where like cars cannot um, or trucks cannot um, they're pretty adaptable in that respect so I've, I've had a lot of different clients. Uh, we'll be doing this again this year for the city of Iowa City for the Climate Festival, uh, CHOMP, uh, Hans Jewelers, uh, some places up in Cedar Rapids. Um, this is kind of shows the adaptability aspect. Uh, so this was for the Alzheimer's Association up in Cedar Rapids last year. And we had a banner there. And what we did was on the back side we left it blank and the people were signing their names. Um, or messages about Alzheimer's and stuff like that. The frame is adaptable so we can do different sizes and different banner sizes. Um, we can put multiple banners in there so say if there's a flower shop they could have half of a banner uh, or a banner saying like this is our logo or contact information all this and then they could swap out other banners for like Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, things like that. And then there are different things uh, that can be done so we could put a box on there and have a banner above. I'm actually uh, talking with one Public Space One about doing mobile art shows um, and taking art out of the community and different things can be done in that respect as well. But this is the next step of where we go. So I, I have the Spartan up there, no disrespect to Iowa City, but this uh, 
uh, software company that I use. They're, they're based out of Lansing, Michigan. So now we have pedicabs, and in the next few days I should be able to go out and pick up the TVs that we're going to have on the back in Michigan. Those have been back ordered due to the chip shortage. Uh, but our pedicabs have uh, Wi-Fi hotspots on them, so you can go to my website, upload an ad, it'll instantly go to the TV, videos, uh, slideshows, all those different things. Uh, the pedicabs uh, seat two to three people. Um, we're putting a canopy on our uh, pedicabs uh, where they're going to have solar power to triple charge batteries, be real environmentally friendly, stuff like that. So this is kind of what they'll look like from the backside with, uh, with those TV screens doing the advertisement. Uh, the pedicabs also have two USB ports uh, for charging. Um, and we're gonna put some tablets um, on the front console that people can see more um, advertisements or take selfies or use the tablet themselves and make it really fun and really interactive that route. So yeah, we've got a, a fleet of those. But we also do uh, weddings, and we can dress the pedicabs up for weddings. Uh, we have a date night package where people can, we'll have to uh, work with local restaurants, and people can choose different packages. We can go set up a picnic for them, or they can have us for two and a half hours to go to different restaurants or different bars. Oops. Um, so we're pretty excited about all these different things. In fact, uh, SoCo up in Cedar Rapids is like a, similar to Active Endeavors, and they rent uh, paddle boards. So we're actually putting a hitch on the back of the pedicabs with a long bed trailer where we can haul uh, the paddle boards down to the lake or other spots with people and then uh, pick them up at the shop and bring them back when they're ready. So there's a lot of very um, innovative aspects that we're doing with this where it's not just your standard pedicab just going around and picking people up. Um, we're kind of doing some fun things. So in Iowa City, uh, those are treated like taxi cabs. Um, during the day, Monday through Friday, for professors or people who live off campus, just to get you to work faster and easier. Um, but we also in Cedar Rapids use them more for like say bar hopping, things like that. Uh, football at Kennett Games, just to get people back into their car faster, hopefully uh, reduce the congestion on the streets, uh, some aspects like that. So we're pretty excited uh, about this idea. It's, it's really been, um, just, just amazing. So the feedback I've always got on the banners that we do has been great. Um, but just, let's see, Friday, Friday and Saturday night up in Cedar Rapids for the Billy Idol concert, and then their Uptown Friday nights. The amount of people that said, this is great, now I feel like I'm in Chicago, or this is faster than I thought. Um, and so the reception has been even better than I thought it would be and hoped for. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. But with that, I'll, uh, I'll kind of end it um, and just take uh, any questions that you have. Yeah, yeah, so I, well, I actually have, um, I can hand these out, but I have a um, phone number, you can call us, in fact, when we were in our city the other night, we saw some people out, we were walking their dogs, and I was just talking to them for a bit, and she said um, that for Farmer's Market on Saturday, they always go down there, and they live maybe half to a quarter mile away, mm -hmm. so they were asking about uh, giving us a call to come pick them up. You know, and I had, you know, my info, and I gave them my info, and said, yep, yeah, we'll, we'll come pick you up, and, you know, I'll have my phone on, and the other employees will have access to that number, too, so, yeah. And how much does it cost? We're doing uh, $5 per person per ride. So, pretty much, because we know most of those rides are going to be within a mile. Um, so, most of that is, I would say anything over half a mile, um, probably would take about five minutes one way and then about five minutes for us to kind of just come back to the local area. So if we're going out to the east side, we'll pick anybody up along the way that needs it, but we would kind of come back down to the downtown core here in Iowa City, for instance. Yeah. Um, first off, congratulations, that it's been fun to watch your transformation. Oh, thanks, Liz. Company throughout the years. Yeah. Um, so kind of back to the pricing, but on the advertiser side, how do you uh, price that 
Yeah, yeah, no, that's a really good question. So on, what I can do on the back side is I can set like what pedic, when the pedicabs are gonna be where and when. Um, so then if somebody goes to my website, they, that potential advertiser can see like, oh, these are the times, the dates, the spots. And then they could choose, uh, it would be based on like one ad or price per video or two ads. Um, and then the length that the ad would run. So I can set a lot of that on the backside and adjust that as needed, especially for the pricing for an advertiser. So we have a big like corporate rate for advertising and then we have a small business, local organization, nonprofit rate too um, for that. So that makes it a lot easier to adjust and adapt because to me, if this is gonna work, it has to be a community oriented thing and therefore it has to be accessible for the community and affordable for the community too. And it makes it easier on the pedicabs to uh, adjust for that pricing versus the banners. Uh, because the banners, uh, which we still are pretty adaptable on that as well and follow the same model. But the banners just can't flip over like a digital ad can. So. And then I guess I have a follow-up question. Yeah. Too. How do you measure success for these? Like, how do you measure how many people it reaches and show your customers? Yeah. So on, when I'm doing the banners, and I can answer that a couple of ways. So when I'm doing the banners, for instance, um, I have like a little clicker on each bike. So like we try and take a baseline of how many people we think, well, that we know are seeing the ad when we're out. Um, and then for the digital ads, there's actually a way to gather the impressions. Um, I'd have to ask my software company that provides that this technical questions of how they do that. But I do know I get results for how many people are viewing that. I think what they probably do is use like Google um, of like how many people's phones are in the area, stuff like that to kind of get the viewership on that. I know for Chomp, uh, with the banners that I've done for them in the past, right in the first year I did it, there were specific days and specific times and places that they wanted me out. The last few years, they've kind of just said, here's our budget, here's the places we want you to hit, whenever. Mm -hmm. But I do know that they have said that the times that I am out, they see a peak or uh, a spike in how many meals are ordered. Um, they're working, I think, on a software aspect to try and do that. Maybe I'd have to check and see, but I do know in the past they've mentioned that to me. Um, I also send every client um, a GPS link. So when uh, we're out, we could say gamify the ad. So you could say this is the day that you want your ad running. We can take this specific route with your ad. Then we send a live link when we start then they can actually share that live link on social media and turn it into a game or a scavenger hunt or other things too. So there's a couple different ways that we track that. Um, I know I've seen statistics that billboard advertising, whatever it is, bike or billboard, is more successful right now because everything's oversaturated online, especially with COVID. Um, TV, radio are kind of dicey. So outdoor advertising actually has the most successful like viewership and then what we're doing is we're taking those ads and making them mobile. So it's not just like you pass a billboard on the way to work and the way home. And it becomes routine because you're every day you're going by the same billboard and you wash it out in your mind and just is there in the background. Or even a wrapped vehicle usually is traveling with the same group of vehicles all at the same speed. Whereas we're letting people pass us by and going different directions. And we're doing that all day long instead of just having a wrapped vehicle and parking in a spot most of the day. So the outdoor uh, mobile advertising really is pretty impactful. That's a good question. Um, is the business shifting now towards the oh, pedicabs? Yeah, you, p people are rickshaws, pedicabs, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, is it shifting to that with the TV advertisement on the back, or is it, are they going to run simultaneously? You mean between the billboard, the, the banners, and the TVs? So, yeah, yeah it, it can. Um, it depends on the day and the client. For ban Some people are just banners only, okay. and some might be just digital only, or, or both. But we can certainly combine those to do a campaign, um, you know, all at the same time. But say, for instance, um, today, the banners, uh, yeah, for, for, they'll be running all day for Chomp today, but in different cities. So like Hills or Tiffin or West Ranch, and then maybe tomorrow like Iowa City or Cedar Rapids. Uh, whereas the pedicabs, you know, would be exclusively like in one spot, but we can combine those. 
Do you anticipate any pushback with the petty cash at Kinnick? No. No. Um, there have, there's two guys from Des Moines that I know that have been there in the past, and I actually am licensed by the city of Iowa City, too. Um, so we'll be pretty much on Melrose or other streets. The university with the banners did not like the fact that I was taking their sponsors a few years ago. Um, so the University of Police, uh, even though we have a letter from the Iowa City attorney saying we're good to go on the banners and all that, mm -hmm. the Iowa City Police threatened to arrest me and it was, it was a whole interesting thing with that, but, but they, they don't like that I was potentially taking sponsorship dollars away from them, so there was kind of a little thing there, but no, I don't anticipate any issues at that. Would being arrested increase your notability? <laughs> <laughs> what I could do is uh, I could probably have 10,000 cyclists come down and I'll ride around and, you know, make it interesting, sure. But <laughs> <laughs> We've, we've gone all year round. Yeah, so that's a good question. So uh, last year is the first year that I went all winter with the banners. Um, and your average winter day is not honestly that bad on a bike. Now certainly last February was the one month out of the year where it was really hard and tough to get out just between the cold and all the snow that we had. Um, but it's more than doable. It's actually not the, the cold so much as it is protecting the equipment from all the salt and everything else. So like right now, we're already talking about like winter procedures with the pedicabs so that like I have a storage garage in Iowa City. I have a trailer that, you know, I'll take them back up to Cedar Rapids on weekends, but in the storage garage, you know, we'll, we'll have like a bucket of water and we'll just kind of wipe everything down at the end of the day to make sure that nothing's getting corroded or rusted out. Um, but I would say, yeah, we're pretty much gonna go all winter and it's not really, surprisingly, it's, it's not the, the weather isn't as bad as you think on your average Iowa winter day. Um, obviously gloves, you know, and like wind protector pokey type things on the handlebars help uh, protect your hands and your feet and stuff like that. But it's, it's not too bad on the human. It's actually harder on the equipment. Yeah. Sorry, I don't have my hearing aids today. I, Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's, we'll certainly have people that hop on the pedicabs in the winter time in Iowa City anyway, uh, but especially I would say the whole spring and summer through really November into Christmas, you know, people downtown doing shopping, all those other things. Um, in fact, I'm gonna reach out to uh, Coral Ridge Mall and see if they're interested in having the pedicabs do laps around the mall so people have so much stuff that they need to go and take back to their car but they're at the end of the, end of the mall. If I'm only here, you're not going other states? I mean, where no, no, no other states as of yet. Um, we're, we're doing uh, other cities like next, well the day before the Iowa State Fair starts, we're doing the Iowa State Fair Parade and we're actually going to be in Des Moines for the Iowa State Fair, um, transporting people like during that as well, so. Um, and if for safety reasons, like if we thought somebody was just really intoxicated, we wouldn't take them just for the safety of it. You know, we don't want people standing up or jumping off or anything like that. But yeah, but we could certainly take people around to bar hop and do those things. Uh, this is really interesting and it made me think about the EdTech Collaborative that's going to be at South by Southwest EDU in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And so I went quickly on my phone and searched and there are a couple of different companies that are offering similar. Uh, so uh, actually the, uh, so the software that we use um, for the, the TVs and the hotspot, and actually I have a QR code that people can go if they want to pay by Venmo or whatever, they can go to the QR code and pay that way. 
that company used to actually manage fleets of pedicabs, which the one from Lansing was actually their company. They actually went into the software development site, so they do digital billboards, pedicabs, mall kiosks. So for them, they actually have, and they're, that company is called Scoop, and they're amazing. Um, but they uh, for, have all that experience from doing that, and so they did it. In fact, I bought one of their pedicabs from them. Uh, so yeah, there are some companies out there. That's the one that I'm really aware of, and what they're doing with this technology is incredible. So if this was an idea that I had, and then by happenstance, I connected with somebody in Iowa City who knew these folks out in Michigan, and I'm like, oh, this is what I wanted to do with the pedicabs, uh, with the digital TV screens. You just took out all the legwork for me, which is awesome, of trying to figure out how to do it. So, so my question about this was, <clears throat> If, you're, if, you're, if your model is to just stay in Iowa, um, I, guess that, I guess that's one thing. Uh, I'm, I'm questioning scale. I'm trying to figure yeah. out what the, what the unique thing is that would keep you safe in Iowa mm -hmm. if someplace in Austin decides, well, we're not content with Texas. Yeah. Let's move into Iowa. Yeah, no, there are, there are companies that do that, but I think once it gets to a certain point where you're managing across different states. So there's two types of pedicab people. Um, like out at Rack Ride, we have pedicabs, and there's two guys who do pedicabs in Des Moines, and then there were two individual guys that basically travel around all year with their pedicabs around a trailer, and they just bounce from event to event to event, and Super Bowl and Rack Ride and other stuff. And then there's two personality types where one personality type is like, basically like we, we're going more of a professional image route, but the other one's like, we're going to blow through red lights. We're going to do all this just to take up as many people as we can. Our cab's rusty and our cab needs work, but we're just hauling out there and taking rides, but they're not as community oriented. They're not really, in my opinion, doing it the right professional, clean way. So that when you scale it and you grow it, you really need very good point people in each city to control it and make sure that it's being done the right way because different cities have different ordinances. Uh, for example, Cedar Rapids, we have an application up there, or well, we have a, a permit up there. That was just one sheet application showing that we had insurance, uh, which we are really highly insured. And they're like, and within a week, they're like, yeah, you're good to go. Uh, Des Moines, same thing. Iowa City, it took two and a half months, and there were probably like 50 forms that I filled out. And, you know, all, all these, so it also depends on a municipality, you know, of how they conduct it, and how they view it, and how they want to do it. Um, so it is scalable and it is something that I would, could see myself getting to that point and scaling it. Um, I think that's something that, you know, next year is potential to kind of have more pedicabs in different cities who are not transporting, you know, as much and that you could be like more, uh, consistently going in each city, uh, more broadly. So that is something, yeah, that I would like to get to. Um, but I think it would definitely take a lot of formality and processes and, and oversight to make sure that it's being done in the right way. Because if, if one person sees that one time somebody did something, you know, and it can get blown out of proportion or, you know, taken out of context or all those different things. So I think it would have to be managed pretty carefully. Um, now Austin uh, is a city, or Iowa City, or even Cedar Rapids are more bright friendly than like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a random example here, like Oklahoma City. You know, our bicycles may not be as socially accepted yet either. So, but that's a good question. <laughs> Piggybacking off of that, so where do you see this going in three to five years? Yeah, um, I certainly can see this really next year, us having another two or three pedicabs um, in addition to what we've got. Um, I could see the banner aspect fading away because we could build a digital trailer with that wouldn't just be pedicab but that could replace the banners. Um, there are other aspects of where we are really committed to cycling as being practical and pragmatic um, and utilitarian for communities. So the same company that makes that banner trailer, they make uh, 10 foot long trailers that could be ice cream, another one could be hot dogs. So I, I could see us almost having a bicycle food trucks, you know, in those aspects too. Um, one of the things that we would like to do with the pedicabs 
is get a pedicab that's wheelchair accessible. I've, I've seen them where people can actually roll a wheelchair into them and be more um, uh, disability accessible or we're uh, thinking about how to approach different organizations of people that might be low income that need to get to a doctor's appointment, may not have a car, things like that. So there are things like that where I can see us going as well, but certainly growth in Des Moines, uh, Quad Cities, Waterloo. I already have people um, asking about the banner ads and some pet cap stuff in those cities anyway, so I, I think we could be pretty strong in those places too. Parades are a good one, too. Excellent. Well, yeah. Let's give Ben a round of applause. 